There was a point back in the early 1980s when the humble trainer became less about something you wore to the gym and more about something you wore to the pub. And now I think a great British brand is undergoing a similar transformation because that is the new Range Rover Evoque. We've come to Dublin Island to discover whether the Evoque is a real Land Rover or whether it's just a fashion faux pas. The first thing that shocks you is its size. It's a full 19 inches shorter than the Big Daddy Range Rover and it takes up no more road space than a Ford Focus, which is worth remembering if you've ever been lambasted for driving a gigantuan 4x4. There's a five-door model that we drove earlier and this three-door, which Land Rover is optimistically calling a coupe, probably because it's more expensive. It's certainly provocative, but I don't think that's a bad thing. If you want something sensible, buy an Audi. Basing a production car on a concept does bring some compromises. It's not exactly easy to get in the back, and this front seat takes an absolute age to motor forwards. Once you're back here, it's actually surprisingly comfortable, even if you're a tall guy like me. And I reckon it's well worth opting for this panoramic roof. Those in the front of a much better time with no shortage of dead cow and posh gadgets. You can even opt for a 17-speaker hi-fi. It feels expensive, which is just as well. The name of this car is significant. Land Rover is determined to establish Range Rover as a bit of a sub-brand, making posh toys while the mothership concentrates on more utilitarian tools. That's why this car can sit side by side with a similar sized Freelander on the showroom floor. And you only have to go a few yards to appreciate the Evoque is a very different car to drive. The old command Land Rover driving position which allows you to see all four corners of the car is gone to replace by something a lot more sporty. No Land Rover we've ever driven has felt this responsive. Out here in the country the Evoque's a bit of a revelation. It can be hustled along in a way that's genuinely entertaining. We would pay extra for the adaptive dynamics though, we'd offer a better combination of a smooth, comfortable ride on the motorway and a bit of extra control on roads like these. This is Tattersalls, one of Ireland's leading equestrian centres, and this is Jack. We're going to find out whether the Range Rover's 240 turbocharged ponies are a match for one giant horse. In the equestrian world, the bending race is the ultimate test of agility, as demonstrated by Jack and ace rider Neve. What's needed is a cunning plan. So I've learnt a little trick. If you put the terrain response system into sand mode, you can kind of kid the electronics into letting you slide it around a little bit, which is exactly what I need to beat horsey. So, stability control off, and away we go. Tight. Ugh. Oh, this is hopeless. Too tight. Let's have some fun. Push the throttle on, let the rear end slide. <laughs> okay, horse can win this one. I reckon I've had more fun. Now, in the horse world, we call this a mound, but uh, in Dogcaster, we call it a great big obstacle. Gentle on the throttle. Up she comes, up she comes. That bit of the horse. Can we get it down without taking the front spoiler off? Tell you what, might look like something out of Made in Chelsea. This is a proper Land Rover. The Evoque costs from 28 to over 40 grand, and for that price, you can have a discovery that'll seat seven and scale the Andes. But this. It's a very different car for a very different world. It really is like the modern trainer. You might only wear it to the pub, but it could run a marathon. Now, in case you're wondering why I'm wearing a ridiculous hat with a pink pom-pom and why I'm sitting on a huge horse, well, that's because I lost the challenge, and with it, the car. Uh, excuse me, um, how, how do I get down from here? 